On today's show, I'll share my driving impressions of the new diesel F-150. Do you know how many countries ship cars to the U.S.? And a look at how automakers are tackling cybersecurity issues. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. While the diesel engine isn't dead yet, and they're actually finding new life in the light-duty pickup segment, helping provide fuel economy numbers many people thought would be impossible not all that long ago. And we just got our first chance to test out Ford's new F-150 diesel, and here's how it performed. The worst fuel economy we got was while towing a small horse trailer. We averaged a little over 13 miles to the gallon on a 22-mile loop that only had a few traffic stops. One truck with a few hundred pounds of payload in the back yielded about 19 and a half MPG while driving up into the Rocky Mountains and babying the truck with no weight on pretty ideal road conditions and only a few traffic lights, we were able to top 31 miles to the gallon. Some hypermilers on the same route were actually able to top 40 MPG. Overall, we think the EPA numbers of 22 city, 30 highway, and 25 combined are pretty spot on. But beyond the fuel economy, the engine, which shares its basic design with a V6 diesel that goes into a number of Jaguar Land Rover products, seemed pretty well refined. Engineers did a good job calibrating the software to the 10-speed transmission. But now, let's talk price. The most anyone will spend is $4,000, and that's coming up from a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. It's as little as $2,800 when moving from a 3.5 liter EcoBoost. The engine is available for retail customers in Lariat, King Ranch, and Platinum models, while fleet customers can choose it on all trim levels. Ford expects the engine to be about 5% of F-150 sales, and mainly expects to attract people that have something to tow. Hyundai introduced a new sporty sedan for the Chinese market at the Beijing Auto Show called the La Festa. The name means festival in Italian. It features the company's new design language and is powered by a 1.6 liter turbo that's made it to a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. The La Festa goes on sale in China at the end of the year. And here's what's coming up this weekend in racing. The Formula One race in Azerbaijan is Sunday at 8.10 in the morning Eastern Time on ESPN2. NASCAR runs at Talladega on Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Fox. And lastly, the NHRA Four Wide Nationals start at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday on Fox Sports. Do you know how many countries ship cars to the U.S.? We have the answer, but it's coming right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. The U.S. imports millions of cars every year. But do you have any idea how many different countries it imports cars from? Well, I bet you might not be able to because we couldn't either. The answer is that the U.S. imports cars from 21 different countries. That may be an all-time record. And here are four cars in particular that caught us off guard. Did you know the five-door Honda Civic hatchback comes from the U.K.? Same goes for the Infiniti QX30. We were also surprised to learn that the Toyota Yaris comes from France and that the Toyota CHR comes from Turkey. Talk about a global industry. Daimler Trucks, with its Freightliner and Western Star brands, controls 40% of the medium and heavy-duty market in North America, and it's looking to expand its dominance with the introduction of the Freightliner Iconic SD. It's a garbage truck sold in Europe, but over there, it's a Mercedes-Benz. It's powered by a 350-horsepower inline six-cylinder engine that's built in Detroit. The truck is made in Germany and will be shipped to South Carolina, where it will be modified for the North American market. BMW's design studio subsidiary, DesignWorks, teamed up with Virgin Hyperloop One and the city of Dubai to create a prototype passenger capsule. The Hyperloop is a transportation system 
that electromagnetically propels the capsule through a vacuum tube at speeds over 1,000 kilometers an hour or about 670 miles per hour. A trip from Dubai to Abu Dhabi would only take 12 minutes. There aren't any windows in the capsule, so DesignWorks helped create an interior that's comfortable and not restrictive. Coming up next, a look at how General Motors is protecting its cars from hackers. Lighter, safer, stronger, quieter, and more sustainable. Tell us where you need to go, and we'll help you get there. Dow Automotive Systems. We don't succeed unless you do. Cybersecurity is a growing concern in the auto industry, but it's not enough to just protect cars from hackers. Automakers must look at their entire operation. On AutoLine this week, we're joined by Kevin Tierney, the Chief Product Cybersecurity Officer at General Motors. Here's what he had to say about knowing when it's better to tackle cybersecurity issues in-house or when it's better to go outside the company. We've put a lot of focus over the past several years in building a, a strong internal team uh, of both just you know, security engineers as well as penetration testers. And uh, it, is, it takes time. Uh, these are unique skills. The technology is unique and it does take uh, development time. We find value in having internal capability because we can move fast uh, once uh, the, the team understands that. But there's always a value of external viewpoints and diverse viewpoints because um, because we understand our systems, you sometimes want people that don't understand your systems looking at them. So even though we have internal capability, uh, we depend strongly on third parties, whether it's uh, companies or academia, or even um, with HackerOne, we have a bug bounty program where we uh, work with security researchers. And you know we're really looking for anyone that can help us improve the security posture of our car. Uh, we're willing to work with them. So that's our view. Now, I know our audience here knows all about a bounty program, mm -hmm. but for our television audience that may not have heard about this, sure. uh, talk about that, uh, that yeah. bounty uh, program that GM has. So, so right now what we have is a, a coordinated vulnerability disclosure program. It's on HackerOne. Basically what it does is uh, there's a whole community of security researchers or hackers, however you want to uh, phrase it, um, that, that you know, really want to contribute and, and um, you know, show what they know and how they can improve products and, and really improve society. And so um, historically there was always a gap where this group of people couldn't really inter integrate with the companies very well. If they knew something, they didn't know how to contact the, the Microsofts or the you know whoever's really started in the software industry. Uh, and so over the past several years, there's been the emergence of these, these platforms that really connect customers and these security researchers. And you can think about it as just an ability to really grow your security capability almost endlessly because whoever is out there um, you know, and looking at your products can share information with you. Uh, the next step is, you know, a bug bounty, which is where you actually start incentivizing uh, people to look at your products, and that's uh, something that we're working on right now. For more about how automakers are protecting cars from hackers, you can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, Autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you here again on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.